everyone, and uh, welcome back to World Fintech Festival. Now, the season is about to reach its prime, and England is playing tonight. With some of the best young players in the teams, especially ESR, Saka, Ransdale, the future looks good for England. Future has a way of bringing everyone, football has a way of bringing everyone together with feelings of belonging, loyalty, and passion without borders. I don't worry, I did not forget that we are still hosting the World Fintech Festival. I just grabbed the opportunity to combine two ecosystems that I'm most passionate about, football and fintech. Our next session is titled, Changing the World Dynamics with Football for Peace and Emerging Tech. And Football for Peace is a philanthropic organization which utilizes the unique power of football to deliver global social change to serve people and the planet. And joining us for this keynote is Mr. Kashif Siddiqui, co-founder of Football for Peace, who will shed some more light on this initiative and how football and fintech can come together to elevate the world peace uh, as well as the emerging tech. But before that, here's a quick video. A diplomatic sports movement trying to unite people. I think we can do more of this all around this country and all around the world. It can bring people together. These are all opportunities for you guys to grow and develop as individuals. It's been amazing, it's changed me as a person. I'm never going to forget this. The fact that sport can do this, bridge so many barriers, is fantastic. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet um, Mr. Prasoon, Mr. Tripathi, uh, the FinTech Festival world's first uh, festival in India. My name is uh, Kashif Siddiqui. I'm a professional footballer and co-founder of Football for Peace and a football diplomat. Um, and I'm delighted to be speaking to you today and thank you for all the sponsors for hosting us. Um, and we want to talk to you about some of the contributions that we're having on a global level with the efforts to adapt to the changing world and the dynamics and also introducing how we feel that football, sports specifically, can have a tool to support and our mission in this and how we can unlock the power of football in a truly transport, transformative way. I'd like to start by... Um, giving a bit of background on Football for Peace and what's brought us here and go through the journey of COVID-19 and that's how affected everything in sport. And I'm sure you guys have seen how this global pandemic has also made a huge shift in the situation that we're here today. But then look into also the emerging markets and how we see that sometimes through crisis comes opportunity. And obviously for those that are following sport know that every crisis in a sport or a football game is a great opportunity and this is what we'd like to transcend in, in in today's session with you guys but um please do feel free to stop in any way and you know have a, a dialogue uh, it's a two-way conversation and however we can uh talk about this and it's a both learning exercise for myself as well as we indulge in this new experience of digital and sport and fintech but um just as a very quick high level I co-founded Football for Peace in 2013. It was started in South America. Um, our co-founder is a FIFA legend, Elias Figueroa. And when I spoke to Elias about this session today, Elias laughed at me and he said, technology, what's technology? Um, Elias uh, is FIFA's 100 greatest players of all time. But I can tell you that during his era, there's no such thing as WhatsApp messages, Zoom sessions, so when I told him about the session today, he, he was laughing because we actually asked him to attend. And um, it just shows how, you know, things are shifting so quickly in, in, a, in a dynamic way. But he himself launched this uh, in 2006 with the late Kofi Annan. And 
the essential uh, focus of their concept at the time was to alleviate poverty through football and to raise awareness for this by bringing non-perishable food items to football matches. And this would raise awareness for technology, uh, for, sorry, for poverty and raise tons and tons of food and distribute it through orphanages, hospitals, etc. Where I come into this, I'm a UK British footballer and I heard about this concept and I, and I said, I would love to bring this to the international markets, to South Asia, to the Middle East, to Africa, because I truly understand that football touches 3.5 billion people. And, you know, it touches heads of states, or your members, toddlers, um, our mums and dads, you know, anyone that we can think of is touched by football in, in, in a funny way, including tribes in the Amazon who love this game. And for me, when we talk about how this concept of football and football diplomacy has shifted so many hearts and minds globally. And we only have to look at the Christmas truce match in 2000, sorry, in uh, post-World War I, where England and Germany stopped fighting and they played a game of football. This is, just shows the power of football in so many ways. And I really truly believe that today's session we can think about and have a dialogue on how football diplomacy, football itself, how technology can work through this to get this concept throughout the world. And we're very proud to be here with you guys today in discussing this. So in 2013, I heard about the concepts and I then co-founded it internationally with the support of the United Nations Geneva office. Um, and my vision with Football for Peace's efforts is to empower youth, particularly young girls and women, following my mother's hardship in George when she fled from Idi Amin's Africa as a refugee. I think uh, Asia generally has um, a huge opportunity in women and in and, and equality, supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Today, we are a philanthropic organization um, that utilizes the power of football to deliver global change, serving both people and planet. We raise awareness of pressing social and environmental uh, issues now emerging into the technology market. We have a venture philanthropy arm and a foundation, uh, which are registered in Chile, UK, the UAE, the USA and launching in India. We have a, um, a very strong relationship with the United Nations with a, with a plan to be supporting the SDG goals, eradicating poverty, social justice, equality, physical and mental uh, and bettering for the environment. And I think this is where the key part comes in because when we look at our projects in rural areas, if we look at even in India itself, the interesting thing is, is that Without technology, your message can't move as far. So the way I see it, today we have support of many royal fam family members, many footballers around the world, as you saw in the opening video, um, heads of states. But the message to go from country to country through to the grassroots, especially when we don't have you know, the manpower to reach these children at a grassroots level for whatever the message may be, the way that technology can transcend this and get this much quicker is I think the concept that we need to be start thinking about on how we can build this together. Um, the current mission areas of work for us look at how FFP is connecting with emerging technologies to expand its footprint. Um, at Football for Peace currently, we are looking at creating a digital platform for the youth that will reshape the learning processes, um, keeping audiences motivated and engaged and I think through the involvement and support of the football world and bringing the football world with the technology world, I think we have a great opportunity which hasn't been done yet. It's an untapped market. Um, over the last year, FinTech and EdTech have obviously become a very hot topic, um, obviously throughout Asia and, uh, and Europe. So I think the pandemic has shown us that the outbreak has highlighted the many inequalities that face our society today. Um, and we believe that with today's um, opportunity and this dialogue we're having with you today on this amazing platform is the availability of access of affordable financial services, which is essential for poverty eradication. Because if you look at civil society, NGOs, governments, those engaging in this technology conversation today, and all of you esteemed guests, how do we bring football to this equation? Because football, as I mentioned, is the largest sport in the world. 3.5 billion people it touches. 
how do we utilize that power to unlock that power and take that to the masses globally? We're looking at poverty reduction, economic growth, for poor people, especially women, access, and the use of basic financial services, which increases income, increases resilience, and improves their lives. FinTech technologies are lowering costs, providing services, allowing more people to access them, and also minimizing the necessity face-to-face -face interactions, which actually personally I don't like. I love I love a, a, a you know a, a, a great hug and a and a handshake and a but however on this conversation today, for example, I can't be there with you today. And this shows exactly how we can move this conversation along without the resource and the footprint, the global footprint when we look at climate. Um, and these are all critical for maintaining economic activities. This, I think, is a really, really um, interesting parallel to the world of football, because on the pitch, football is being played at a very high pace, intensity, more than ever. You know, the global game is changing. The sport is developing at an unprecedented rate off the pitch, too, with technological trends, you know, sweeping throughout the game. Week by week, we look at various ways where there's, you know, a, a VRS system in place now where the offside rule, for example, we're looking at smart technologies where we're looking at how we can be smart variable de devices to prevent injuries. I mean, and this obviously goes through all sports. Um, we can also look at, you know, the trends that are working with um, grassroots versus uh, the bilateral relationships with um, governments. But I think when you look at all of this, you look at an experience of 5G coming in as a game changer, potentially, you know, and that's something that we have to strike a, a really fine balance with between the nostalgia and the innovation, which is a constant battle. Um, and one that will be, we feel, that could uh, wage long after this debate is done. Um, you know, does 5G shift the trajectory and uh, upset the established order that we have? There's many conversations around this, the core focus on those watching uh, games in the stands and on TVs, and then suddenly we have VR goggles. Is that the same experience that a child can get when he goes to the stadium, the look in the field, the immense intensity of a stadium? Um, the underlying force that drives revenue of the beautiful game. And all of these things, you know, that on the verge of advancing the game as we speak or our lives, that will bring a whole new meaning to the term revolutionary. Um, but we believe that 5G and technology as we move is a true game changer because it enables completely new experiences that we are still unaware of in services. Um, we call it the metaverse now. How does that metaverse support football? Um, not only in terms of you know, downloads and interaction virtually, but also regard to connections with other technologies like artificial intelligence and bringing you know, computing closer to the game. All of a sudden you can create augmented reality overlay stats, you know, over a game, over a smartphone. And all of a sudden you can share all of these experiences which were previously impossible. Exactly the conversation that I had with our co-founder today when I told him I was joining this session and he didn't understand the word FinTech and what that meant. It just shows how the, the game is developing, but is it developing fast enough to follow the trend of technology? Um, as I mentioned, it opens a variety of new opportunities when you think about experiences like augmented reality, virtual reality, wayfinding, navigations, assistance, as well as kind of related, uh, you know, venue smart services, which are particularly working with the amazing commercial partners we have today, for example, and how these digital channels can really opportune the next generation for us and, and, and give a real balance of what we're trying to achieve. I guess the key thing here is also to look at how technological advancements are allowing traditional education and during the massive shift in our social lives caused by health measures, lockdowns put in place. I think, you know, if you look at this conversation, lockdowns coming in, say, even five to six years ago, would we be in the same situation to be handling how, how the world has handled this? You know when we talk about football for peace and what we're trying to achieve with, you know, online classes, online education, online training, and you can follow your stars, role models, these global influences, was that possible? Perhaps, perhaps maybe not, definitely not 10, 15 years ago. But it's apparent now 
that with the pandemic acted as a powerful trigger for the reawakening and facilitating the fintech and edtech world in a new status for In just a few weeks, students from all around the world, from sports to educators to influencers, shifted to online learning, bringing the industry, the intention of the general public, investors, civil society, governments, you know, um, it's been a, it's been a great joint effort. However, technology's uh, influence on how charitable organizations, which is very, very relative to our conversation today, um, is how we deliver our work and services when they're so limited. According to a, a recent uh, Tech Trust report, which I'm sure some of you are aware of, only 59% of NGOs, um, sorry, 59% of NGOs lack digital strategy. That's more than, you know, half with the majority missing funding and tools and training necessary to deliver it. So when we talk about how we're going to hit the United Nations Sustainable Development 2030 agenda, we feel that technology can really fast track this. And that's where we have to come together to look at how potentially we work to use sports, to use football, to use these opportunities to raise awareness for the work and get it to uh, a different level. And this is where we believe today's environment and this conversation today, working with you guys, that we have a great opportunity to work with Football for Peace, to work hand in hand with technology, to work in hand in hand with, with the FinTech conference today, to create a digital platform for good, a force for good, where the beautiful game, the world's biggest conversation, where football can interact with users and teach them the necessary skills to not only learn life skills, not only to learn football skills, but to excel in the game beyond what we can do today to, to teach better individuals. And this could be introduced through a variety of widgets, features that create one-on-one -on -one experience. Community because one of the key things for us is, and what gave me my opportunity in life was my mother's journey and how these experiences were achieved and seen and doing good deeds, seeing her good deeds to help others. And I think, when you link football to doing good with technology, you get a very, very, very strong opportunity to, to make a, a, a difference. And this is something that we're very, very passionate about. I mean, looking at this one-on-one -on -one experience that we can create with users, our influencers and footballers can also look at how we can be able to accept, get access anywhere in the world. Sorry, guys, are you guys still with me? Yeah, yeah. If we can, we can okay. hear you, please. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. Sorry, guys, if there's any questions from anyone, please feel free uh, to uh, have, you know, give me, um, yeah. happy to answer, so, stop in the way and in any dialogue. Uh, so, Kashif, I can, I can see a few questions on my screen here. Um, so, let me, if you, if you, with your permission, I would like to, you know, read them out to you and maybe you can answer them. Yeah, sure. And I was just, uh, I mean, by just uh, wrapping up on that last bit and um, sure, please go ahead. to just, uh, yeah, so just on the, on, on the players part, because I think it's really important and it might, may, may trigger some more conversations that I feel that influence today, you look at Meza Ozil, who's a great ambassador for Football for Peace. His social media following around the world is 80 million is going up to potential 100 million by the end of this year. And the point being is that Meza himself, you know, played for Real Madrid, played for Arsenal, you know, Germany national team captain. He's won the Champions League. He's won the World Cup. Bringing that influence into a technology space where he's linking, he's now launching his own NFT, for example. How do we link that with doing good with technology, with football on a wider level? And those influences then being able to share all the good they're doing in the community and encourage our youth, our future generations to achieve those same good deeds and hit the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And this is anywhere in the world. We started in today with you guys and allowing football to expand its global footprint, but actually doing good with it, accommodating language, needs and local issues. Um, so essentially we're making these young leaders for the future to do good uh, through technology. But sorry, Ahmed, back to you. Great, okay, thanks. Uh, so I have a few questions here, and uh, which I would like to, you know, bring to your attention, and uh, maybe we can see uh, what you can uh, say on that. So the first one we have here is uh, actually about football gaining popularity in India, uh, which we have seen in the past few years as well with ISL coming forward, is uh, and uh, the Indian team 
uh, Indian football team moving forward quite a bit as well. So if the football is gaining popularity in India, as well as India is on a fast track to reach the last mile in terms of uh, you know, technical connectivity with the internet and the mobile phones. Um, so how do you see the tech ecosystem playing its part in expanding the footprint for Football for Peace? Sure. Um, I guess what we what we have seen that the digital channels are already now that are integrated within football and the integrated experience and service designs that are, and you look at FIFA and the leverage around the stories they're creating around the game. And I think obviously the under 17s World Cup wins coming to India. Um, you know, this I feel on the question is that they can create really deep insights into what players are, what they're doing behind the scenes, you know, but in real time. And I think that's where the grassroots opportunity um, aims at and uh, looks at and looks at a deeper level of involvement and engagement with, I mean, fans and events like the FIFA World Cup now going to Doha. This is another great opportunity for the first ever Middle East World Cup, which is very close to home for us. And how does that affect the World Cup with the Women's World Cup? And how do we keep this relationship going post-event? Because the FIFA World Cup comes or say, you know, the Women's World Cup comes, the under-17s to India, and then it's gone, right? How do you keep that legacy alive with the fans in sport and engage them on a more regular basis? And, I mean, you only have to look at the USA, because the USA are amazing at this and what they do with events and engagement. And the fan experience they create are quite more advanced than those, for instance, in Europe and potentially South Asia and the Middle East. And I think it's, um, there's a lot of learning to be done there and how they are interacting with technology to keep those franchises and experience of technology and linking it to football for the next generation. Right. Uh, from that itself comes, I think there is another question which uh, talks a little bit about, because you just mentioned about the World Cup as well. Um, just recently in Euros, what we saw was the use of artificial intelligence in terms of what was being telecast on the on the television. So different countries had uh, different uh, advertisements running on the boards behind on the pitch. Uh, so the second question I think is coming from that itself is uh, that we have seen we have already seen the use of artificial intelligence in advertising during the Euros. Any plans from Football for Peace when it comes to using artificial intelligence? And if there is, can you just share some more information on it or put some more, shed some more light on that? Yeah, it's very interesting because, again, you know, um, by the time the FIFA World Cup 2022 is here, you know, um, you've got to start already thinking of the FIFA 2026 in the USA. As mentioned, linking that obviously to what's, um, where the USA has been quite advanced in, in, in these kind of technology and fan experiences because at the heart of the discussions, we have to prepare for whatever the next technology advance might be, right? So I think that the key thing when you talk about the artificial intelligence is how is that re relating to e-football? Because when you look at e-gaming, that's a trend that is growing so quickly. And how does this work with, you know, football competitions and potentially leaving fans um, in a in, in sporting environment for for a legacy, basically. And I think that is where there's a, a, a very strong link between football, augmented reality, um, and technology to keep that going with gamers above new series that are coming uh, coming out. And you look at um, the legacy of football activities that I've already set out to endure with participating in the E-World Cup, um, the FIFA E-World Cup, the E-Nations, and how we can use those um, focus around competitions and where games are basically there to be won. And um, it's a competition side of a game, which I feel could really elevate the international football brand in an experience where we haven't actually experienced yet. So it's uh, quite um, counterintuitive. Okay, great. Uh, just a final question uh, from the viewers, and then I'll have one question for you. That will be uh, a personal question from my side, but let's go with the viewers' questions first. Um, this is another one uh, which is talking about the a lot of football clubs uh, on the club level and international level as well have been using big data to fine tune the player and the team performances, right? Yeah. Uh, have you been using this tech along with the outreach to social media uh, for the football for peace or the expansion of the footprint in the terms of not exactly for the player performances, 
but uh, the performance of the organization itself and uh, how you're moving forward with that. So that's actually a very interesting question because um, Football for Peace generally has not really focused too much on, on that side. Um, whereas we feel that this partnership with you is our kind of launch pad on what we're trying to achieve together. Because uh, if you look at it from a development perspective, um, where there's a lot of data analysis on clubs, for example, you know, Manchester United has one of the biggest footprints in the world. Um, and yet they're still actually figuring out how does that actually respond back to a grassroots connection to their club. And as we are trying to fit football and, sorry, football for peace in between the United Nations and FIFA for the goodwill and almost the UN of world football, the data analysis on this situation is truly uh, remarkably on a different level. And I think that's what we have to look at how we can actually build a, a viable platform which actually can not only take in data from a footballing perspective, but also from a, um, a life skills and SDG level on how do we measure the impact that's made on the ground. And I think it's a, it's a great question on, on how we actually build that, but it's definitely something that we are looking at. I'm sure that after uh, today's session, there are so many people, uh, so many uh, you know, uh, people from across the fintech ecosystem and uh, uh, the big data and AI as well are joining us today. So they must start thinking by now that what it is that they want to do. Uh, coming back to the final question from my side of the day, rather two questions in the same question. Uh, so I have been reading about you quite a bit. And I did find out that at uh, you know uh, at a very very early stage of uh, your footballing career, you was a gunner, right? Uh, I'm sure that uh, this is this is right. So how was that experience? Because me being a gunner myself, I really wanted to ask you this question. And uh, how are you still you know working with these clubs in the Premier League if you are? Uh, and what is it that is coming out of it? The results that are coming out of it, uh, specifically for the idea of football football for peace. Yeah, sure. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate to be one of the few South Asian players to have grown up in the uh, professional ecosystem. And yes, it would have been a dream to carry on and make a first team debut. But as you can imagine, there's only 11 uh, South Asian players that have ever played professional football in the UK. So it's it's very, very difficult. Um, you know, the home of football is every boy's dream I mean, to become a professional footballer. Um, it's just, it's like, you know, uh, growing up in an environment where it's, it's not a choice. People say that football is, uh, you know, the first religion in England. So um, from that perspective, the experience for me has been very, very um, humble. I've been very fortunate to have this opportunity. And from there on, you know, going to different clubs and having, you know, played in India, USA, um, on an international stage in the Olympic 2008 qualifiers, also in Dubai. I think that I've got that I've definitely had a platform which others haven't, but I've used it in a way that's quite different from other footballers. But what football has given me is a platform and a great network, as you just mentioned, because the access that we have with almost every football club around the world, the plan for us is to look at how we can connect with these clubs and we can give them an experience outside of the actual game of football. Indeed, it's a beautiful game. And it's, you know, the appeal is unrivaled and universal. Um, but obviously, as mentioned earlier, in the space of a few years, Football Now fans are engaging in a completely different way. So I feel that the conversation in creating a Football for Peace centre with these clubs in their hometowns, potentially bringing this concept to you as well. And how do we build a Football for Peace centre, but with a digital transformation in it and that technology that fuels it? And it would be great to hear more feedback from the people that are there today with us, joining us, on how you feel that we can uh, not only interact with fans through football clubs, but how do we trigger that amazing passion of fans to do better for society? That's a USP that we want to find. Because in, in the world today, as mentioned, football is very powerful. You know, as you mentioned, you're a gunner. You're, you're never going to be, you know... Um, taking pass with someone who supports Chelsea. But what if we brought you together, Amit, with a Chelsea supporter digitally to do good? 
And I think that's what takes centre stage and that's the conversation that we need to be talking about, how Football for Peace sits in the heart of creating a force for good and using digital opportunities, which are so complex and can be over overwhelming and distracting for football clubs because football clubs are focused on the 90 minutes, but it's outside of that 90 minutes on how do we basically change the dynamic of the conversation. And most clubs are kind of taking this, you know, laid back approach of let's wait and see what happens. And to be fair, that's how we've kind of, but I think if we can get a, you know, one stage ahead of it and set a new strategy, I think in a digital age to incorporate an existing model, I think it would be very, very powerful. Right. Uh, and just one party, uh, parting question, it's just, uh, just popped up. So I also read that you have played for the uh, Pakistan football team. Uh, if I'm not uh, wrong here. And uh, we know that, right, right? In the Asian subcontinent of football, even though there are a lot of people who are in love with the sport itself, but it hasn't got that much of popularity. So working or playing in uh, uh, your country's team, uh, what were the things that uh, made you kind of get on with the Football for Peace? And also I read somewhere that your mother had, uh, had a huge influence on uh, this initiative of yours. If you would like to talk about it, that's completely on your discretion, really. Yeah, no, I think um, it's very interesting because my father was born in Lucknow uh, in India. Uh, my mother was born in Uganda, but I had the opportunity to play represent Pakistan. People still ask me, How, what, what was all this about? But then I also came back and I played in India, you know, um, in, in, uh, in the IPL, Indian Super League, sorry. Um, but I think, um, again, that, you know, this is, for me, it's football doesn't matter where you come from, what religion you are you know, what your nationality or gender is. And that's generally about sport. It transcends all of it. And that's the message that I've always wanted to deliver that. I feel that I'm a perfect role model to showcase that my football journey has taken me on a completely different level. And this conversation with you guys today, and it's really about revolution, right? The revolution is here. I've tried to do something through my personal thing, but how do we take this down to the masses? And digital um, is changing our world so fast. And... I want to be able to kind of grasp that and bring it back to, you know, why this journey started and why I'm here doing what I'm trying to do. And I feel that my mother, and yeah, you're right, she's been an, an amazing cornerstone in my life. And I feel that us working together, engaging not only children through our digital endeavors, but also engaging parents. Because if it wasn't for my mom, I honestly wouldn't be here speaking to you guys. And the platform that I have today you know, with the United Nations from the Vatican and the conversations that I have on a daily basis with amazing, very powerful people and always trying to bring it back to why I started what I'm trying to do with the support of some amazing, you know, heads of states and bilateral relationships. But bringing it back to this conversation today on this digital endeavor, endeavor on how do we then link parents to it? Because ensuring that everyone has a right to education, that's what the UN say. And to support the goal four about quality education, right? The full title of SDG four, I believe, is that we're trying, the UN are ensuring that, ensure that everyone has inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In some cases, how do you do that without actually engaging with parents? And I think from a digital perspective, as you see, my mother's also always on Facebook now, um, how do we then interact with those parents to pull them into that unique digital experience and promote lifelong learning experiences? And I think this is something that it could be really, really interesting in, in engaging on this because social development, capacity building, you know, we have to embed these in the platform of providing a holistic transformative uh, opportunity to not only upskill children, but also parents across the world. Wonderful, wonderful, great. Uh, uh, so I think as a, as a closing uh, statement, uh, would you like to have a you know, final uh, statement or final comments on uh, before we say goodbye and move on to the next one? Yeah, sure. I'd like to say um, we'd love to join hands with everyone here today. And um, I would love to meet you, talk to you and, you know, work in partnership because one of the key things for us is to work hand in hand to take this mission forward. Uh, Mr. Nirav Tripathi, who's our founding chairman in India, is leading this to move forward. And we really believe joining hands together with you guys today, that we believe that Football for Peace's digital aims are not only to provide an extensive and well-development platform for individuals, but also to an extensive training program in all sectors of life. I think, you know, talking about bringing exclusive content from 
um, influences globally, personal development, philanthropy, I think there's something there that we could really work hand in hand mm -hmm. and to give something connecting connections, connectivity to looking at the 2022 World Cup all the way through to 2026, because now from Doha to the USA, we have a great opportunity to look at this. And I think the fintech industry and the play in supporting these such initiatives, there's a whole load of work to do. And we're really, really um, humbled to be on this journey with you guys and see what we can do, because we really believe the future is now. Digital has already fundamentally changed the way we interact, footballing around us, the globe is shrinking, climate change is upon us, the youth are campaigning. How do we give more of a voice to the youth by bringing the influencers together, but in a digital way, and to a large degree, football is not just an exception. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I see a lot of potential moving forward with this collaboration with fintechs and Football for Peace as well. So during the pandemic as well, the fintech industry came together. You know, it runs on the fuel of collaboration. And I'm sure we see many more opportunities coming to our way on in the future. Uh, in the meantime, though, I would like to thank you for joining us. And it has been a great conversation and a great opening from you. We'll see you very soon. And uh, thank once again, much. thanks a lot. And have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, uh, uh, to our viewers, we come to end of another exciting session. And uh, we will see you soon in another 15 minutes on the other side of uh, uh, the World FinTech Festival India. And uh, stay tuned with us and don't forget to refresh your web browser to join us for the next session. Thank you and uh, we'll see you soon.